Hi. Uh, I bought this this enormous three foot by four foot canvas to paint and hang in this space right here. It would look great there, right? Yeah, it really would. But as you can see, I still have the plastic on it because it's been in my house now for a year and I've been completely intimidated by the thought of painting just the sheer square footage of this. It's a little overwhelming. I wanted to wait until my skills with the spin and splash technique developed, like, greatly. <laughs> So now that I've finished my commission for Andy and Kim, the videos for which you can see starting with video number 12 here on my YouTube channel, I feel like I've hit my stride with this spin and splash technique and I can finally rip off the plastic and tackle this big boy. Oh no, oh no, <laughs> here we go. The view you're seeing right here is the canvas upside down. So this is what it looks like from the back. There was so much prep work involved with getting ready to spin out this 12 square foot canvas, starting with the board that the canvas would rest on. I picked up a board at my hardware store, then I cut it down to a size just smaller than the length of my canvas because I knew that I would have to leave the canvas on the board to dry for a few days before I tried to move it. After using a lot of pins to make sure that the cake round would be secured to the cake turntable, the board was secured to the cake round. As you can see here, it's very, very secure. And the canvas was secured to the board. I was pretty sure the canvas wasn't going to fly off this medieval contraption when I spun it out. Then I figured out that using stir sticks as handles to spin out more than 26 pounds of unpainted canvas and support system wasn't gonna work. The discarded piece of wood removed from the board was the perfect size to make two very large handles. So, I attach them to the board. And, oh my gosh, it's so secure. As opposed to these little tiny things, right? Because <laughs> this is not size appropriate. Ready? Look at how fast it can spin. I've cleared out my studio and put all of this, <laughs> all of this plastic around the room. It's not pretty, but hopefully it will contain the paint. Speaking of paint, that was my next assignment. Figure out exactly how much paint was needed for a 12 square foot canvas. After seemingly endless calculations to check and double check my work, I figured out how much paint I'd need to use for this Colossus. Here are the numbers. I used eight cups or half a gallon of pillow paint, four cups or one quart of pouring medium, almost five ounces of acrylic paint total, and around six ounces of cell activator. I made eight ounces of the cell activator, but only used about six ounces for this painting, which is still a lot. You can get the formula for this painting in video number seven here on my YouTube channel. Here's the list of colors I used. Liquitex Professional Prussian Blue Hue, Liquitex Professional Cadmium Free Red Deep, Liquitex Professional Cadmium Free Yellow Medium, Deco Art Deep Sapphire Metallic Paint, Windsor & Newton Payne's Gray, Windsor & Newton Windsor Blue, Amsterdam Deep Gold, and Amsterdam Silver. I also put 0.2 ounces of GAC 800 in with each individual color to help slow down the drying process and help prevent any drying issues I was hoping to avoid. And I know this painting looks like a hot mess right now, but, <laughs> but just give it a second. I need to add a little bit more pillow paint before I blow it out, which is usually not the way that I do this. Despite all of my best efforts, the painting was tilting a little towards the left side of the screen for some reason. I didn't know that was happening before I put the paint on the canvas, so I needed to tilt the painting back to recenter the paint before I blew it out. All right, I'm gonna use the hairdryer. Here we go. I don't know what's gonna happen here, but, uh... but this is exciting. I wanted to see if I could get some more lightning cells, so I added a big puddle of the cell activator and blew that out before I did my first spin. This is a clearly a giant experiment. Giant <laughs> being the key word. <laughs> now I'm gonna add as much pillow paint as I have left in this container. 
There are a lot of cells in this, which I'm very happy with. When you do something on a larger scale, like I did with Andy and Kim's commission pieces that were 24 by 24, after having never done anything that large, you're not exactly sure what your end result is gonna be. Kind of put paint on the canvas and hope for the best. Oh, that's the worst sound in the world right now. <laughs> I don't know if I have enough paint on the canvas. That's it. That's all I have made. So here we go. The very first spin. Please don't fall off the board. And please actually just move some paint around the canvas. All right, here we go. This is my first spin of my giant three foot by four foot canvas. I'm totally nervous to do it, but I'm gonna do it. Here we go, ready and there. Okay. Paint is moving off of one side of the canvas. There is a giant bare spot at this point, but um, paint pretty much stayed in the in the spin box area, which is a good thing. This is an enormous canvas. What the heck was I thinking? There are some really cool sections that I can see already. So many cells. My goodness, I didn't expect that so much. I wasn't sure if I was gonna get any cells whatsoever. I am definitely going to spin it again, but I'm gonna spin it the other way. All right, I'm gonna stop it. Much easier to stop this giant canvas. Holy smokes. And I'm gonna give it a second, very powerful spin going the other way. And here we go. Something moved. <laughs> it felt like the canvas moved a bit. But there is still paint coming off that I can see. And I've definitely gotten closer to the side that didn't have as much colorful paint on it. There are some extraordinary cells in the very center of this canvas. This is looking pretty cool. All right, I'm going to stop it. Ugh. Wow, really, really cool. I'm really thinking that I'm not gonna spin it again. <laughs> it's, it's really great. It's really great. I put so much paint on this canvas and it's shocking to me that anything turned out at all in terms of form or design or visual interest. And it's so big, <laughs> it's so, so big. I managed to get cells, I managed to get ghosting, I managed to get all of the things that I'm, that I'm loving so much about this technique on smaller canvases. Well, literally everything else is a smaller canvas compared to this, but <laughs> the, the delicate, intricate cell work that appeared, the ghosting between colors, it's all there on a very large scale. I was in shock at how much I loved this adult science experiment. <laughs> but after I was able to calm down and pull it together, I scraped the back of the canvas, as I always do with this paint formula and technique, and then I walked away and let the drying process start. Because of the mysterious tilting I had with the canvas support system, I propped up the canvas on the lowest side to even it out while it dried. Speaking of drying, I let this painting dry for four whole days before I felt comfortable enough to remove it from the cake turntable. After using almost three-fourths of a gallon of paint on this 12-square-foot canvas, I learned a few things. I lost the use of my studio for the better part of a week as it dried, and I accomplished a goal that was so incredibly intimidating for an entire year. So I call this one an overwhelming win. And the end result is exactly what I was looking for. Dramatic, oversized, and gorgeous. If you'd like to see close-up photos of this painting or any of my other work, check out my Instagram account. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.